On this episode of Modern Greaser, we travel deep into the bowels of the junkyard in search of fenders for our Ford F-100. We also resist the urge to send nudes to a strange man in a Ford F-150. And we also get very intimate with this 1964 Ford F-100. How intimate, you ask? Well, just enough to make your grandmother blush. On this and that, shoot. <laughs> On this episode of Modern Greaser, we look at this cool 1964 Ford because it is a driver and it is awesome. So if you like tonneau covers on your trucks and you use them to haul things like furniture, this is the episode for you. Some of the standard features that you got with the 1964 Ford F100 included 38 pounds of insulation used in the interior. Wow. Other features that came standard were turn signals, a rear view mirror, an ashtray, a dome light, single speed windshield wipers, and a 233 cubic inch six cylinder engine. If you were mad balling with your 64, you could buy a 292 cubic inch V8 engine, a cruise-o-matic automatic transmission, heavy duty equipment package with a 70 amp generator, whatever that means, I'm pretty sure that's old terms for alternator. You got a two-tone exterior finish, perforated headliner, cigarette lighter, a passenger sun visor, wowee, driver's side door armrest, additional seat cushioning, that's additional to the 38 pounds that they gave you. Lots of cool stuff on this truck in 1964. We drove from Tampa to Rockmart, Georgia, 510 mile trip, unknowing what this truck was going to look like when we got there, and it turned out to be a real gem. We're going to look over some of the features of it, and it is a real hot running truck. Now, this thing has a Ford 302 in it that was rebuilt by Fred's Old Fords in Rockmart, Georgia. It is a rebuilt C6 transmission, and in the last five years, my friend has put not a whole lot of money other than gas and oil into this thing, so it's been a really good truck. Now, this truck has a straight front axle on it. What does that mean? Well, it's actually a complete piece of steel that goes from side to side to each one of the wheels, and it is a little bit of a different driving experience compared to uh, similar vehicles of the same age. So I have a 63 C10, which is very similar, obviously, and it's like driving two totally different vehicles. The reason the ride quality is different is that the straight axle rests on top of leaf springs, where other vehicles, such as a C10, would have control arms connected to a coil spring. So they're quite a bit different in their ride quality. So as you can see here, this yellow and red fender was not original to the truck. You can see the door over here has a bit of a dent in it and he was driving along and somebody crashed into him and he said, I don't want to go get a brand new fender that's black primer. I'm going to go find one in a junkyard. So him and I set off into a junkyard and we took not only one fender but two fenders off of the vehicle. And it's definitely probably the hardest fender you'll ever pull off a car. You might think, hey, this is a pretty easy fender to get off of a vehicle. It is not. Not sure if it's too much better than the one that we were replacing, but who doesn't like a nice day in the junkyard? Removing a fender is a straightforward, easy process. However, this fender has 18 to 21 bolts that are just out of the reach of a wrench. Now, one of the other issues is that the clips rust on solid, and then they spin around inside the fender where you can't actually get to them and grab onto the rusty clip. Now, we spent an hour and a half, we even had to take the door off to get this fender off of this truck and we decided to treat ourselves with our success by walking around the junkyard to explore. On our explorations, we found an even better truck with a nicer fender. However, this one was caked in concrete, so we had to chisel away at it to get to all the bolts. So this is the fender that's actually good, huh? The cement saved it. <laughs> Look at how nice that finish is. Yeah, it's like brand new. And I think it looks even better with this fender on it. So if you've got a car that's been hit, don't go buy the new fender that primer black or whatever. Go to that junkyard and go find something fun because it was a fun day. I love about this is um, well many things but one is the rust it's in such a perfect place it just 
I love the rust. It's like this is where the farm, it was a farm truck, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where the farmer put his arm for like decades. <laughs> and now I put my arm there too. And in the summer, I sweat my behind off. And <laughs> my sweat joins with his <laughs> sweat molecules from decades. And that's it's awesome. all about the rust, right? Now, he never put a clear coat on this patina, right? No, like, I wanna. Is... I wanna do it. So... so my friend Matt uses this thing. He uses it as a workhorse, and he's not afraid to have this tonneau cover on the top. Now, with fiberglass, it's not something you see original in the truck, but I think it works. I think it looks pretty good, and it's functional. So he's not going to have this sissying around all the place. He puts big old boat motors in here. He's got a whole collection of boat motors. So that... And this keeps everything safe and dry and keeps people away and it locks too, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's super functional and I think it actually looks really good. He's got a disc brake conversion set up on the front of this with a dual master cylinder, which is great. Most older vehicles came with a single line master cylinder. That meant there was only one line and if you had a breach in the line anywhere, you had no brakes. So newer vehicles, or if you convert a vehicle like this one, you'll have two lines, one for the front brakes, one for the rear brakes. So you'll always have a backup of brakes if for some reason you lost brakes on the front or the rear. Nobody wants to be that I told you so guy, but my buddy Matt's battery is held down with a bungee cord. I said, dude, if you take a corner too far, you're gonna weld your battery to the fender. I've had it happen on the GTO. The GTO went off at a frame rest off restoration and there's still a spot in the fender from where it was at. So it's really good to have your battery tied down. However, I should not be the one giving out advice considering I can't even get a GoPro with a suction cup to stay put. So Kyle, you think there's any girl in the history of girls that ever was attracted to uh, a bumper sticker like that? I mean, I'd send my nudes to him. You want it? I think he probably, I'm assuming that he wants chicks to send nudes though. I mean, that's a wild assumption though. Yeah, I guess. I just don't think it's very effective. <laughs> I mean, send nudes. I'm sure lots of girls, I, I mean. mean the girls stop at a stoplight, they're like, oh yes. Where do I send them to? That's awesome. I would love to send you news. In fact, you're so, that's so cool. I, I could, I could marry you. You know, I was playing devil's advocate. You're absolutely right. I don't think anybody on the history of the earth has sent that guy nudes, except for like a creepy dude. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. This F100 is the fourth generation of the F100 series. The 61 to 63 models used a unibody design that had the cabin bed integrated, which was a very unpopular design, which they switched over in 1964. Now, in 1965, the F-Series was given a new platform with it has a twin I-beam front suspension, and that would be used until 1996 on the F-150 until 2016 on the F-2 and 350s. Belly rubbins, you want belly rubbins? Oh, you're gonna get some belly rubbins. One thing is absolutely for sure, and that is junkyards are awesome. Spending time in a junkyard is great, but spending time in a junkyard with one of your good friends is even better. Junkyards are full of basically everything and anything. You never know what you'll find. So every junkyard is not complete unless you have the proper flotation devices. You think this is still good, Matt? I'd wear it. I, I think I'd go yeah. down with the ship with this on. Yeah.
be absolutely sure to click the subscribe button. Not my face, but the little face on the thing. If you click that, then I can make more videos. So be sure to subscribe 